Now, Deb, you've designed these workouts so that people could do them at the gym, but also really quite nice and easy to do them at home. What sort of equipment do people need? Ideally, something like a yoga mat, but most people have carpet or even a rug at home or a mat, so it's fine to do on the floor. I've done some exercises with a Swiss ball. A lot of people have a Swiss ball at home. And we're going to, a bit later on, use some of the blocks, but you can even just use a stair or even a telephone book. It's fantastic. A lot of people, you're right, do have Swiss balls at home, but I think one thing that's quite confusing is what sizes to choose because there are a different variety of sizes. How do we know? Because you're sitting on a smaller one than me. Ideally, you want, if you're buying a Swiss ball, you want to get a Swiss ball so when you're sat on, your knees are at a 90-degree angle. Now, there are exercises that you do when it's easier to have a bigger ball or more difficult to have a bigger ball and vice versa. But essentially, for the majority of exercises, and if you're using the Swiss ball at home as a chair, you want to have that 90 degree angle. As a general rule, we tend to say if you're around 5 foot to 5 foot 5, you'd want 55 centimetre Swiss ball. About 5 foot 5 to 6 foot, 65 centimetre. And above 6 foot, 75 centimetre. Hi and welcome to Gloss TV. Today I have personal trainer Deb Pick with me and we're going to be taking you through an apple body shape workout. So the first thing to discuss probably with Deb is how many repetitions and sets of those repetitions that people should be doing. With most of these exercises the correct technique and form is most important so I would only start even with as few as six repetitions and then slowly build that up even to about 15, 20, but just remember that the technique has to be good and you have to feel the muscles working efficiently. So when we're talking about the apple body shape, obviously we're talking about somebody who puts on weight around their middle and is a bit more rounded. What kind of um, areas are these exercises hoping to target today? Yes, normally the apple body shape is more rounder through the body and through the chest with quite thin limbs. So I'm working at waist definition, chest and arms. Those are the areas that you tend to feel most insecure about. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to working my waist with you. So let's get started. Okay, the first exercise is the side bend. It's for waist definition. So you need to lie sideways onto your mat, slight bend in the knee, and some people tend to find it uncomfortable. So you can just roll the mat underneath the elbow. Keep the elbow close into the waist so there's not too much pressure through the shoulder joint. Tighten through your waist muscles. As you breathe out, raise the hips up and lower down. And just raising up and down. Make sure you work with the breath because it helps tighten through those muscles through the waist, help control the movement. As you advance with this exercise, you can hold it in the raised position and extend the legs out. But just be careful if you advance too soon, it does put a lot of pressure through the shoulder joint. This next exercise is a variation of the crunch. And you need to lie on your back. The legs about shoulder width apart and you need to firmly grip the ball. So you need to pull your heels towards your knees. As you do that, you feel a contraction through your abdominals. This could be the first exercise. So just working with the breath. Exhale, pull the ball in towards you and just breathing, keep that held. It's quite a nice exercise, just gets you used to working with the breath as you control the movement. If you want to advance it up, crossing the arms onto opposite shoulders, pull in with the ball, and as you breathe out, crunch the upper body up. The main thing to remember with this exercise, because you're working your abdominals, your abdominals go from the base of your body to the base of the ribs. This area is going to shorten. So as you breathe out, that muscle shortens, which raises the upper body. So you get a good curve through the spine and coming up. Some of you might find it a little bit uncomfortable through the neck or prefer to hold the neck or support the head. And if you find it really uncomfortable through the neck, you can just take a grip of the mat, rest the head back into the mat, And as you breathe out, roll up. 
The main thing to remember with the exercise is to keep the firm grip with the legs so that you work your lower abdominals with your upper abdominals and keep it all combined together. This exercise is for the abdominals but very internal. You need to just rest your heels onto the ball, have a little bit of an arch into your lower back so that your hip bones, these bones at the front of the body, are level with the bone at the base of the body. So they're parallel to the floor. A lot of people tend to pull in flat so you've got a roundness through your back. But then you don't work your back muscles as well. You need to get a balance between your back muscles and your front muscles because this is how we stand. We don't stand with a rounded back, we stand with a really nice curve through our lower back. So just resting the heels on, have that small arch into the back and draw in from the pelvic floor muscles. If you over tighten your abdominals, you will get that rolling which doesn't work the correct muscles. So just drawing in your pelvic floor muscles, lifting up, as you exhale, you're slowly lowering a leg down to the floor. Doesn't matter how far around the ball you go, as long as you keep the ball still and control the movement. So you should feel it working just through the inside of that abdominal area. You might do about six to 10 repetitions of that one and then changing legs. It's the same thing on the other side. Stay pulled in tight, feeling it working through this area here. And remembering, exhale as you lower the leg, inhale as you bring it up. Then there's another variation to the exercise, alternating legs, trying to keep the ball still. So you exhale, lower the leg down, inhale up. No movement through the ball as you change the legs and go the other side. So the real core control in this movement is keeping the stability through the legs, not replacing the foot rolling and changing sides. So it's a very controlled movement. Okay, this is the dive bomb press up. So you're gonna work the chest area through the front, but also really strong through the back of the arms. You want your belly button resting into the middle of the ball and then walking the hands forward. So the ball is just below the waist. Don't come too far forwards with this one. Then as you look at your hands, they should be directly below the shoulders. Have the thumbs in a line and the fingertips point to a triangle that goes in front. Your nose starts between your fingers and then as you inhale, keeping the body as still as you can, bring the body down to the floor. Exhale, bring it up. So if you look where my nose goes, it starts between my hands and then comes about 20, 30 centimetres in front. So you get a really good workout into the back of the arms. Another exercise for the abdominal area, you want to lie face down on the ball and you're walking the legs out. So resting onto the hands, make sure you press the back of the fingers down into the floor so the weight's not into the heel of the hand which can be quite uncomfortable. Holding it flat, relaxing through your shoulder blades, not bunching into your neck muscles. As you exhale, you want to draw in through your abdominals, pulling your bottom up towards the ceiling. So breathing out, inhale and release out. As you progress this exercise, just walk the hands further out. And just keeping the legs straight, pull up. Done, just carefully roll it back. This is the ball twist exercise. It's a great exercise to do after a workout. It's also fantastic for the waist definition. Just lying on your back, resting your legs onto the ball. You inhale and take the legs over to the side, keeping the shoulders down, and exhale, 
bring the ball back up to the center. Inhale, twist through the other way, controlling the movement through that waistline, and exhale. You want to get more control through the waist, just bring the arms up. So you're taking your legs over, but you're not toppling because you're keeping your abdominals tight, which stops you falling to the floor. If you do just want to loosen off the muscles after a workout, it's just really nice just to do, just rocking from side to side. 